Okay. Vice City changed my life. No. Vice City, hands down, has to be one of the most important games. No, I say that all the time. The reason I like Tommy Rusetti is because I relate to him. No, I did that with Bully. The helicopter mission in this. No, I'm not even going to talk about that. What do I remember about this game? The soundtrack was pretty good. Oh, yeah, the soundtrack was pretty good. Checkpoints Show FM, and if you've ever played GTA Vice City, you're probably very likely to remember three things about this game. The weapon cheat, that helicopter mission, and of course, the soundtrack. And if you were born in the 80s, and this game was perfect for you, as well, you must have been of age in 2002, and you must have fond memories of how this game captures nostalgia of the exaggerated 80s. But if you was like me and born in the mid-90s, then this game came and blew your mind. The colours and that overused ghost in effect, these fantastic high-energy songs, and growing up with my dad who was a DJ and also very big into collecting records, it wasn't like I was any stranger to any songs from the 70s or the 80s. But for the first time ever, this felt like a time when a game and music was generally mixed into something I have a passion for. To even grab this footage as soon as I jumped into this game, I sprinted to the closest car just to throw on Flash FM as fast as possible to hear Billie Jean. And it's the power of this soundtrack that for some reason makes you forget almost the rest of this game. I couldn't tell you what the plot was besides Tommy wanting to get his money back. Back, but it's an experience for some reason that seems to stick with me. And this game came out at such an innocent time in my life. I was young, very young, still in primary school when this game came out and it's so special to me because it holds up to a lot of nostalgia. It's a lot of those schoolyards talks where you've known cheats or secrets and people saying oh you could swim or you could get eaten by a shark or rumours of easter eggs of a beach ball which is actually there. It felt like I had an insight and knowledge to tracks because of my dad and just because of my overall love for the 80s. Oh, hang on a minute, we've, we've got a call coming in. Hello, you're on the uh, checkpoint show? How the f did you steal my daughter's fing pet hamster for fing drug money, you stupid? <laughs> you well, don't get me that fing hamster back, you son of a bitch. I swear to God, I'm gonna fing come to your house and fing kick your door in, you stupid motherfucker. You I fucking... swear to God, I'm gonna eat your fucking ass, you son of a bitch. Well, that must have been a, a, a wrong. Oh yes, yeah, so still to this day, it feels like I'm comparing every other GTA soundtrack to Vice City's soundtrack, and even any other modern open world game. I'm always comparing the music to see if it can stand up to the level of GTA Vice City, because for me, Vice City is the pinnacle of gaming soundtracks when it comes to at least having a radio in a car. I feel like that GTA has always lived in the shadow of Vice City. Yeah, San Andreas had a few classics tracks like NWA or even Rob Bass, but it never felt too special there wasn't anything that I really remember. They clearly know this and to this day they keep chasing that nostalgia of Vice City. They brought back Vice City with Vice City Stories which was just a side game and had equally just as good as a soundtrack and was available on the PSP and also on the PlayStation 2 but at the end of its lifespan so whether or not this game sold well I'm not too sure but I really did enjoy this game. It's not as good as the original Vice City but the soundtrack here is top notch and a lot of people do appreciate this game anyway so give it a go if you are a fan of Vice City and you've never played it. They constantly bring back Vice City stations to fill it up with some of the most iconic tracks there is and every single time it's never just as good as Vice City was. They brought it back in GTA 4 and yeah this game had a few good songs but most importantly it had that one Russian song which was amazing. But after that, I just sort of jumped off the hype train of Grand Theft Auto. I wasn't really a fan of GTA 5. And I can't put my finger on why I love GTA Vice City so much. But as a kid, it felt like I was a part of something. To be a part of listening to this soundtrack and growing up with friends hearing these soundtracks for the first time, it was fun to sort of know these songs before everyone else knew them and kind of feel like the popular kid who knew exactly what these songs were and also feel like the kid who knew exactly what all the cheats were. Anyway, if you could just hold right on, we've got to take a little word from our sponsor. How do you like to enjoy a Rusty Brown's Ring Donut? I like to lick lovingly around the outside and then thrust my tongue in the middle. I like to munch it vigorously. I just love the batter all over my face. On Friday nights, I just can't stop eating Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Oh my god, it's so good. Sometimes I like to wear women's panties and walk around Fifth Street. When you go downtown, make sure you enjoy Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. 
you will generally find that games with a fantastic soundtrack will probably stay in your memories forever, even if it's just one song or even just one incredible theme. Whether you're talking about Sonic Adventure 2 Escape the City or that Skrillex scene from Far Cry 3 when you're smoking all the weed, GTA Vice City made sure that every single station was just filled to the brim with iconic songs. There's a reason why the first song that you hear whenever you jump into the car at the beginning of the game will be Billie Jean. This grabs your attention and shows that this game has bangers immediately. And before you know it, you've already listened to Video Killed the Radio Star, Kids of America and even Get Down on Saturday Night all before... Oh, wait a minute, I've got to quickly change this. Hmm... Perfect. Anyway, where was I? All before that you're told to kill a man with a chainsaw. Something that blows my mind and I find generally quite interesting about Vice City is the lore of GTA itself. There's radio hosts here that tell their own silly little stories that are just way too funny to listen to. When you think about Tony who gets drugged up live on air, appearing as a younger self as an apprentice in GTA Vice City, appearing in GTA 3 on the flashback FM being told that she was too drugged up in the 80s to even remember setting her hair on fire and then even appearing in GTA 5 on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It's the fact that she keeps reoccurring it makes her feel like she's very alive and the fact that she comes back in GTA 5 and then going back to it, it's so much more charming to sort of see her rise and grow up. Even though she's just a dumb silly character who's there on the radio station, she's still fun to listen to and she feels very real, very relatable in such a comedic over exaggerated fashion. And I also remember her because she's just so sandwiched between such memorable moments and great songs that I listened to growing up. While I'm editing or even while I'm drawing, I can still listen to these radio stations to this day on their own just to listen to these characters talk, do silly gags even though I know the jokes like the back of my hand, but also just to listen to the great soundtrack that I know shaped my childhood and makes me feel nostalgic and even shaped how I listen to music to this day. Vice City really shaped me as a person with my musical tastes and even the way I take in small stories in video game or any other media. Going back to this game really was a blast from the past and I just want to... <sighs> Come in.